The movie begins in the Kingdom of Long Trellis, where the townspeople were going about their normal day. In the palace, a couple of carnies attempt to entertain the king and queen, and two eccentrically dressed entertainers were peeking at the performers from the corner. Although it seemed like the king was enjoying himself, the queen had a sulken face and looks at the dancing entertainers with boredom. When one of the jokers spills water on the pregnant carny as a joke, the queen was offended and leaves the common hall. As she rushes to their bedroom, the king follows her to apologize for their unexpected reveal, and following her inside, the king hugs his wife and holds her close as she cries. One night, a gaunt-looking man dressed in all black heads to the palace and approaches the royal family with a promise of a child. Although the king mentions that they've had many try to deceive them, the old man insists that the salvation he brings is completely true. The king asks the man what he wants for the solution that he offers, but the old man tells him that it would only take an act of courage, mentioning that the price of birth is always death. The old man then tells the couple that they must hunt down a sea monster and cut out its heart and have it be cooked by a virgin alone. He promises the queen that when she eats the heart, she will indeed become pregnant. The following day, the king wears a driving suit and heads out into the sea to find the monster. Wait, hold on. Did you subscribe to our channel? Come on guys, you're here, you're watching the video. Help us out by hitting the subscribe button as it really helps out me and my team to make more videos for you guys. And now, let's get back to the recap. After journeying deep into the water, he finds the creature sleeping on the sea floor. Getting close to it and catching it by surprise, the king manages to kill the creature but is fatally wounded in the process. The queen arrives at the beach and was heartbroken by her husband's death. Kneeling next to him, she picks up the heart that had been carved out of the monster and she takes it to the back of the castle. She then finds a virgin from the castle maids and has her cook the monster's heart that was still beating. As soon as the girl drops the heart in the pot, the virgin girl becomes immediately pregnant, the fetus growing inside her instantly. The queen feeds on the cooked heart and is impregnated as well, but giving birth the following day. After her labor was over, the queen holds her child in her hand, finally happy. Days later, the king was buried with great respect. His body displayed ceremoniously to all his people to see, while the queen rides in the back with her newborn baby. Sixteen years later, the queen's child Elias was now all grown up and had pure white hair and eyebrows like the sea monster that he came from. The maid's child has also grown up and looks exactly like him. The two have become inseparable, which upsets the queen, and calling the maid, she threatens to throw her out if she ever lets her son come close to her own. When her son returns from playing with the servant's son, Jonah, the queen warns him that they will both regret it if she ever sees them together again. In a different kingdom by the name of Strongcliff, the king was a lustful man who was unable to control himself every time he saw a woman. One morning after spending a night of drinking and passion with a group of women, he hears a girl singing in a beautiful voice and attempts to make her his by giving her gifts, unaware that she's an old and ugly woman who lives with her older sister. The following evening, the king arrives and knocks at their door, demanding to see her. Changing her voice, Dora promises him to return in a week and tells him that she will let him see her finger because she's only a delicate virgin. Agreeing to return in a week, the king leaves. In another kingdom by the name of High Hills, the king is watching his beautiful daughter Violet sing while playing the guitar. While being entertained by Violet, he suddenly becomes enticed by a tiny flea that he finds fascinating. Taking it to his private room, he decides to keep the flea and feeds it tiny drops of his blood. As the days pass, the king's obsession increases as the flea grows, neglecting his duties as king and spending all his time training the animal in secret. One morning, as the king was drinking with his daughter, she insists that he must find her a husband. After asking her what kind of husband she wants and insisting that she will wait until one comes along, the king leaves to his room to feed the flea that has now grown to become really big. Back in the kingdom of Long Trellis, the queen calls her son to her room to help her choose an earring and suspects it's Jonah instead. To confirm her suspicions, she spies on the boys talking about how they can rule in turns if even the queen cannot tell them apart. While Jonah tries to leave Elias' room through a secret door to the meat cellar, the queen waits for him and attempts to kill him. And although injured, Jonah manages to escape. 
The following day, Jonah decides to leave and refuses to tell Elias the reason. When Elias begs him to stay, Jonah stabs the tree in front of the castle, letting the water spill out from it. He explains that as long as the water runs clear, it means that he's okay, but if it turns muddy or bloody, then that means that he's in trouble. And watching his friend leave him, Elias is heartbroken. In the kingdom of Strongcliff, Dora attempts to make her finger look young to show to the king, but realizes that it won't work. Upset, she drags her sister Ima's finger and shows it to him through a hole. Feeling very enticed, the king asks more of her, and she deceives him by telling him that she would only sleep with him in complete darkness, and driven by lust, the king agrees. The following day, Dora uses wax to tape up her loose body, and heads to the castle where the king was waiting for her unexpectedly, having all his servants blow out the candles. The following morning, he sneaks out of bed and opens the window, revealing her true face. Angry at being deceived, the king has his guard throw her out of the window while she was still wearing the bedsheets. Although the height that she was thrown from was quite high, the trees below break her fall and she hangs between the branches. Suddenly, an old witch arrives and helps her down. When the witch sees Dora crying, she nurses her from her breast, which turns Dora into a young beautiful woman with long hair. The following day, the king goes out hunting and finds the transformed Dora in the woods. Unaware that she's the same woman that he threw out of his castle, he's taken aback by her beautiful looks. In the kingdom of High Hills, the king has his doctor summoned promptly to have him investigate a respiratory problem that his now giant flea was having. Shocked by what he had seen, the doctor was unable to help the animal which dies. The next day, the king approaches his daughter and gifts her new clothes, telling her that she is to be wed soon. When she asks him who her suitor is, he says that it's a person who must pass his test, explaining that if no one does, then fate has decided that she must remain there. In the Great Hall, the king has displayed the flayed skin of his pet flea and asks all the potential suitors who the animal's hide belongs to. After many men have guessed wrong, an ogre approaches and using its strong sense of smell, guesses to which creature the skin belongs to. The king, who had assumed no one would guess, was shocked by the answer. Although he didn't want to give his daughter to the ogre, he was unable to go back on his word. Violet tries to fight her fate, but the king forces her to do as he proclaimed to the people. Violet is then forced to go with the ogre as per her father's wishes, and he takes her to his cave where he lives atop a tall cliff. And that night, the ogre drags Violet to his bed and sleeps with her. In the kingdom of Long Trellis, the stream that used to be clear has changed to red, informing Elias that Jonah was in trouble. Wasting no time, Elias grabs his horse and galloped in pursuit of his friend. After a long journey, Elias arrives at town where the people were happy to see him because they assumed that he is Jonah. And in the castle, the queen speaks to the old man who had first advised her about how to get a child. When she explains her request, he tells her that every action has a consequence, but she was willing to accept it. Out in the woods, Jonah was trapped in a cave after falling and breaking his leg. Just as Elias finds him, he sees Jonah being pursued by a large flying monster. The monster manages to attack Jonah, but hesitates when Elias puts himself before it. Taking the chance, Elias stabs the monster in the neck and kills it swiftly. Elias manages to get Jonah out of the cave and returns him to the village people and his wife. Down in the caves, the monster's body dissolves and reveals that it was Elias' mother all along. Meanwhile, in the kingdom of Strongcliff, Emma receives a beautiful dress as a form of a gift and also an invitation to the king's wedding. When she arrives, she finds out that her sister Dora is now the future queen. Taking her aside, Dora promises to take care of her sister and tells her not to speak a word of what's happened. Emma then becomes giddy as a child as she enjoys herself at the wedding party, telling people that the queen is her sister. When the party was over and all the guests have left, the squire tells Emma to leave the castle but she refuses, insisting that she wasn't just merely a guest. Hearing the ruckus, Dora approaches her sister and warns her to be quiet lest she loses everything. Although Emma insists that she wants to stay with her, Dora was adamant that she goes, screaming at her to leave. Thinking she had gone, Dora goes to her bedroom to freshen up and is startled when her sister walks in, begging her if she could 
could stay there. Emma asks her sister how she was able to stay young so she could do it as well, but Dora explains that she doesn't know. When Emma kept insisting, Dora angrily tells her that she had herself flayed and tries to get her out, but they're interrupted by the king, so Dora is forced to hide Emma, warning her not to move. Although she had been told to remain where she was, Emma was enticed by Dora and the king's passionate moment, revealing herself to the newlyweds and shocking the king. Alarmed by the old lady, the king has her thrown out. Desperate to be like her sister, and believing her sister's angry words about how she was transformed, Emma begs a butcher to flail her. And once the man had peeled off her skin, she returns to the castle bloody and looking grotesque. Up in the caves, Violet sees a woman on the other side of the cliff and begs her to help her get away from the ogre. The woman tells her that she will return for her the following day and leaves despite her desperate cries. The next day, the girl returns with her circus group family who save her using her talented tightrope crossing brother. Although they assume the ogre had died after he fell into the cliff after they cut the rope, they're shocked when he attacks their wagon and kills their entire family. Although she tries to run, the ogre catches up to her and fearing for her life, Violet calms him down by submitting to him as an apology. Feeling accepted, the ogre gives her his back so he can carry her, and using that moment, she cuts the monster's throat, killing it instantly. Violet returns to her father's castle, holding the ogre's head in her hands, and reveals it to her father, who was now very ill. As soon as they see the head in her hands, the citizens along with her father fall to their knees, and the king weeps and begs for forgiveness. Several days later, Violet's crowned queen in the grand ceremony, attended by her citizens and nobles. As she's escorted forward by her father, she catches sight of Elias and his people, who've been invited to witness the coronation. Violet looks up and sees a man crossing a thin rope, and was lit on fire, and remembers the boy that had carried her on his shoulders and made the same journey. On the other side of the room, the king of Strongcliff and his wife Dora were looking up at the performance. Suddenly, Dora felt the skin on her body revert to its old state, and startled, she runs out of the palace crying, knowing that if the king finds out, he will eventually have her killed. And the movie ends with a distant view of the talent Carney crossing the rope on fire. I hope you guys enjoyed the recap, make sure to leave me a like, leave a comment, also subscribe to my channel, I love you guys so much and I promise to see you on my next recap, bye!